Coach Greg here, and I'm with Simon Miller. He's part of the Power 13 book. He has an amazing channel. He tells you what he thinks. People seem to call him an a-hole, but I think he calls himself that, which makes people want to just call him that in return. He also bears a striking resemblance to, can you tell? Johnny Sins. How it's cool true. is that? You look like Johnny Sins. Is that awesome? Does that suck? What is that all about? Uh, it's, it's, I, would, I, don't, I don't really think I have a particular opinion on it. It does happen a lot. Genuinely happens multiple times a day. I think it's got to the point now where I'm just used to it. But I don't want, you know, Johnny Sins is a very successful member of his community. So, you know, to be compared to someone that's successful is fine. I think it gets a little bit boring just like anything would, right? After a while, you're like, okay, I get it. Especially when somebody says it and they think it's the first time anyone has ever said it. You're like, dude. <laughs> This has been going on for like five years. You so you so past the curve. But I would rather be compared to Johnny Sins than to, I guess, a less successful person. So no, it's all good. It's fine. Although, so this when, is what I, I want to know. Yeah, Johnny, say you're getting older. You're gonna <laughs> retire. Would you take over? If asked, if you could, if you could be Johnny Sins and do what he does, would you ever consider doing it? Absolutely. Millions not. of dollars. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. I couldn't do it, Greg. I couldn't do uh, it. I am not. I do not have that chemical makeup. As soon, right? I could pretend that I was going to do it, and then as soon as I'd get into the filming area, I'd be like, "I'm really sorry, guys. Things things aren't working in the way that they're meant to because I'm way too nervous. <laughs> I've just, I've just got to go. I'll be his head double. That's fine. I do that, but everything below the waist." I could, could you do it like genuinely? Forget the Johnny Sins thing. If someone said, "Greg, we'll pay you, we'll pay you millions of dollars to be in one of those movies," I suppose we'll go with. I, I honestly couldn't do it. I really oh, couldn't. <laughs> Frankly, I could do it for sure, but not <laughs> as a, a a guy with a girlfriend. But if I was single and I had no money and it was desperate, I'd be all over it. If I was That's desperate, it may be different. Now, if I was desperate, it may be different because people in desperate situations completely change their their mindset, don't they? But today, if the phone rang. <laughs> And they said, Simon, I, mean, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Although I would like millions of dollars. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways to get millions of dollars. You can sell a freaking cookbook, for example. You can. You did it very it, well. It might well. work. <laughs> so there are, in fact, other ways. Changing the topic, you mentioned previously in a video that you had lost motivation. It was a time of the cove and it was frustrating. You had a hard time training. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate. Like, what got you out of that? And how can you convince people to stay motivated? Or is there such a thing as being motivated? Or is it just, it come from within? What can people do? Well, I'm going to have to blow, I'm going to use the turn of phrase, I'm going to have to blow smoke up your ass, Greg, as they say, <laughs> because I think we, we, we've talked about this before through comments and whatnot. You were a huge uh, motivator for me because the gym has always been my, it's my number one thing. It's my foundation, my rock, you know, all those things that people say. But then when I was trapped in my house and I couldn't see my girlfriend, I wasn't allowed to go out and all of these things, you know, again, the, the perfect word here, trying to find that motivation. It was the first time ever where working out to me felt like a chore. Because for, you know, for years, going to the gym had been like, you know, a roller coaster, if you like theme parks. I was like, yeah, I get to go to the gym. But yeah, it just, it just went away. And I think it's because, you know, life changed and I was stuck in, you know, my house. I was working. I didn't have many people to, you know, bounce ideas off and stuff. And that's when, you know, I just started. I don't, I don't even remember how it happened, but I just found one of your videos. I think it was a natty or not. And I thought it was quite funny. And I thought it was quite entertaining. And you know how YouTube works. It just, you know, ping, 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 ping. And it throws videos on you. And I think, you know, just to, you know, looking what people in the comments were saying, seeing the cool community you developed just made me remember, oh, no, this is absolutely, you know, the, this is what I love to do. And also I was getting out of shape. I tell you, that's a great motivator. A great, a great motivator is when you walk past the mirror and you look at yourself and you go, Simon, this is, this is not a respectful, this is not a respectful image given everything that, uh, that you've been trying to achieve. But motivation is really hard. Like, I, mean, I, I think what people just assume that super successful people, not that I'm saying I'm one of them, but in general, that super successful people are motivated 100% of the time, and they're not. I mean, they're motivated more than the average human being, but they still have days when they wake up and they're just like, oh man, I can't be bothered today. Because, I mean, I bet you must have days like that, right? When you, I know you, I know you do, because I've seen you <laughs> set it on videos, but it just happens, doesn't it? And who the hell knows why, but you just can't be bothered. And I think rekindling that passion is what's important. And I guess the annoying thing is, is there's no, there's no secret to it. You know, it'd be great if there was, like if you think this way or you take this supplement or whatever, you're going to be super motivated, but it's not true. You have to find that weird thing inside yourself. 
But yeah, it's true. When it was really bad in the COVID times, really early on, I was, I was, I remember because the the rules over here were you could eventually they allowed us to have a a bubble, whatever the hell it was called. So I was allowed to see my girlfriend again. And a random takeaway turned up. And she was like, are you ordering takeaway? She's like, this is weird. You don't order takeaway. But I was just like, I don't care anymore. And thankfully, I, yeah, I, I found my way back. But uh, yeah, no, I, Greg, I owe you a huge, a huge uh, deal of thanks for that. Because again, you were entertaining, you were inspiring, and you were, you know, giving out good advice, which is always good because there's a lot of crap advice on the internet as well. Oh, absolutely. And that just reminded me that, yeah, this is, you know, okay, we had a little bit of a slip, which is fine. But now let's tidy it up a little bit. And I think that that's great to hear. But I mean, and for me, honestly, I think I'm fortunate. I'm lucky in that I like so many different types of activities. And I was a phys ed teacher. And a lot of people think that, you know, I just scream and shout at people and I scream at them like a drill sergeant. If I was a personal trainer, I was never that type of a person to like yell at people to just do. I always thought I need to them to like this and they shouldn't do it because I'm telling them to. They should do it because they want to. And if you don't like what you're doing, how are you going to do it? But for me, I was good at a lot of sports growing up and I really enjoyed it. So when something happens where I'm not motivated for something, there's something else there. Like if I don't want to go for a bike ride, I can lift weights. If I don't want to lift weights, I can go for a walk or a hike, or I could go for a swim. There's always something that I want to do because I just genuinely like moving my body and being active. And for most people, they don't like it. So the problem is they don't have anything they want to do. So I really think that's the problem. People need to experiment, find the activity that they'll like. And then if they get that activity they like it's not a chore because you like doing it i like going to the movies and i like eating pizza i don't need motivation to go watch a movie and eat pizza you know that is the thing yeah no and it's spot on and i always tell people that because they're kind of like you know i want to have big muscles but i don't like going to the gym it's like okay look going to the gym and lifting weights is a great way to get muscles probably the best way but there's a thousand things you can do like i've got a mate who's like a semi-professional rock climber He's jacked. Of course he's jacked because he spends all his time, you know, grabbing and flexing his muscles. So I always try and push people in the direction of don't don't try and conform to this weird template that some fitness communities have made to yourself. We have to it's almost like you have to punish yourself. You got to get up at three and you got to drag yourself to the gym and you got to do. No, you don't. No, I mean, look, if you're training for a competition, then, yeah, you know, hardships are going to come with it. But if you just want to live a health and uh, health and fitness lifestyle, it can easily fit into what you've already got. As I mean, you've hit the nail on the head as long as you're enjoying it in the first place. But I swear some people just want it to be hard. They want it to feel like the, the most difficult thing ever. I don't get it. I don't know if it's that people want to brag or show off. They got to be the hardest worker in the room. They got to work, wake up at 4.30 like Mark Wahlberg and The Rock. And <laughs> I'm in there before the light comes up and I'm doing this and drinking raw egg whites. No, that's not sustainable. Go to the gym when you want. Do it the way you like. Train as hard as you feel you can. And if you like it, you're going to keep doing it. That's the thing. You're going to keep doing it. And I think that's one of the most underestimated things in all of fitness is the longevity of it. Once you've got the consistency and the longevity down and it's just what you do, you're laughing. And okay, yeah, there'll be there'll be bumps in the road like I had with COVID, but because deep down you know you enjoy it, you'll go back to it. Like you, it's, it's like the movies, right? I don't know what it was like over there in Canada, but obviously all the cinemas shut down over here. They've just opened again. But, you know, given that it was safe to go back out, one of the first things I did is I went to the movies, even though I hadn't gone in almost two years. And I, you know, I think it's the same with fitness too. But again, there's just so much bad information out there that makes people think they can get there super quick. So they'd rather do that one as opposed to sort of, yeah, you know, incorporate it into their life. And that sucks. And of course, I'm basically talking about V-Shred, but let's not, let's not talk about <laughs> V-Shred because there's no point. Yeah, and absolutely. It was the same here. The The movie theaters are shut down. The gyms are shut down and they opened up recently. And that was the first thing I wanted to do, get back in there. Now, unfortunately, the gyms opened back up. People didn't go back. I went, I'm like, how is there no lineup to get in right now? Like nobody's at the gym. And granted, it is summer, but I think a lot of people got out of it for so long that they just... They just don't do that. So I think that there's a huge impact in health and fitness on the time of the cove, as I like to call it, that people just have lost their passion for health and fitness. I would believe that obesity is the levels are up and there's probably going to be a lot more illnesses with cardiovascular diseases and so on as a result of this um, pandemic. But enough of that. Who wants to talk about that? I'm more interested in this. You used to be a professional wrestler and you're still involved in this quite heavily with YouTube channels and whatnot. And what exactly got into that and can you talk a little bit about that 
Yeah, well, no, I still I still wrestle right now. Obviously, I, I had to stop because of the pandemic. They don't let you uh, sweat on somebody. When <laughs> you got a disease going around. How I got into it, I have absolutely no idea. In terms of sort of falling in love with pro wrestling, I just saw Brett the Hitman Hart when I was a kid and he gave somebody a slam and I was like, well, that's the coolest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. And I got obsessed. But yeah, in terms of, of actually getting into it, it was this weird sort of amalgamation of many things. So I was doing the YouTube stuff. I had, I, I'd say a, a super niche audience. Uh, I used to work in video games, but then I saw there was an opening on a wrestling channel. I thought, oh man, I love wrestling. I got, I got to go for this. And I was able to get my foot in the door there and they wanted ideas. So I said, well, how about we document what it's like to become a professional wrestler? It's something I'd always wanted to try. I thought that kind of, again, ties back into the motivation, right? If I give, uh, if I put some accountability on my head, I'm more likely to, you know, to stay on it because I knew it was going to be hard. And I had such a good time doing it that, you know, when we'd done the series and when it was time to go out there and start, because I had my first match, I got such a buzz from it. I like, screw it. I'm going <laughs> to just going to keep, I'm going to keep doing it. So yeah, I, I, I can't tell you what I get from it. I have absolutely no idea, but like so i had my first match probably after the pandemic probably a couple of months ago and i woke up the next day and i thought i'd be hit by a bus like i was in so much pain and i was like why why do we do this but in the moment when you got the adrenaline running and it all comes together yeah it's just absolutely it's, it's absolutely awesome and the other cool thing about it as well is that it also it's what it does it ties into fitness right so if i don't want to do cardio on a certain day i'm like well you better do it because you've got to be in the ring tomorrow night and you don't want to you know you don't want to blow up you want to look good and all of these things so when all that came together as well i don't know it it, it just ticked a box i think i was missing and I, look, all our all our subject themes are coming back around again i just really enjoyed it and i think if you enjoy something just throw yourself into it and see where it goes and is wrestling, is it kind of like going to a photo shoot? Because I mean, I'm personally, I'm curious to this because like if I had to have my shirt off and, and take a photo for something, I'm probably skipping supper that day because I don't want to look like a bloated whale of some sort. So do you have to change your diet before doing an actual match? You have to like cut water, cut carbs, a uh, carb load. Like what is the, what do you do to prepare for one of these matches? Yeah, I don't, I don't eat carbs on, um, <laughs> on days I've got matches, which can be really hard because, again, this past weekend, I had a match on Saturday and Sunday. So, sort of, you know, by Sunday afternoon, you, you're feeling pretty. But though I will just put, I'll put some carbs after when I've had my first match, I will eat some carbs. But, yeah, you do. But I've got a lot better with that. This is a conversation I was having on my channel the other day. Like, you, you need to look a certain way. Well, no, no, it, it's better to look a certain way if you are a professional wrestler. Obviously, you want all shapes and sizes. But if you are going for that, you know, I'm a muscular guy look, you want to ensure that you get that across to the audience. But the best way it was described to me was you can't, ex you know, you're in, because because I grew up with bodybuilding, right? I love body, when it came to, when it came to physiques. I understood that I was never going to be able to get there. But in my head, that was the, that was the absolute dream. And then a good wrestler friend of mine said one day, look, you can't think of wrestling like that. You just need to look like you can kick somebody's ass. <laughs> That's it. As long as they believe you as a fighter. But, you know, because I because I am into the whole fitness stuff, I will always muck around with my diet and I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll reduce my water intake and stuff. But that can affect your performance too. And I've certainly have matches where like, man, I'm poop now because I haven't given myself any energy. So you do need to, yeah, you do need to find that balance. But in a wrestling locker room, with the dudes that are walking around, like I say, with six packs and, and are all jacked, they're all like, I'm so hungry because no, nobody eats anything. But, you know, it's, it's, it's the nature of the beast. It's, 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 it's a fine, it's a difficult balance to find. I will say that it's really difficult because you said like when you go to do a photo shoot or a competition, as you know, better than anybody, you, you completely change your mindset to how you would in your day to day life because it's a completely set of circumstances. I find it just goes to show just how much pressure is to look a certain way, whether you're a female and you're looking on Instagram and you see the bikini bodies, or if you're a guy trying to look tough or, or a wrestler, you just said the wrestlers are walking around starving. You would think in your head, they don't care how people think they look, they're wrestlers, they're macho men, but literally they're, they're trying to have the six packs, just like the gym shark models. So there's no real difference here. Everyone is trying to look a certain way to fit into societal pressures to, to, you know, have the dream body. Exactly that, right? And I think that's when you open the doors to, well, to mental health problems, really, because you can get absolutely wound up about it. I have no problem saying that I have, I mean, not wound myself up into a frenzy. That's well too extreme. But, you know, felt real, real pressure and anxiety before having a match because I think 
you, you're looking bloated, you're looking fat, you're not in the best shape ever. And that's especially been true over the last few months because I'm not in the shape that I was uh, after coming back from surgery in April. Like it takes a, you know, it takes a long ass time to to find that balance. And <laughs> I did a video of this too. At a match the other day, someone just shouted out at me, Miller, you need to do more cardio. <laughs> I was like, I don't need to, I don't need to hear that right now, you mother Hubbard. So, and that's all, you know, you could have nine other people say to you, Mal Miller, you look great. But the only one you're going to remember is Simon, you need to do more cardio. And you're right. The amount of pressure on people these days is ridiculous. Because I mean, when I, I'm sure it's the same with you too. Well, actually, it depends on your circle, I suppose. But when I got into lifting weights when I was a kid over here in the UK, it was like the weirdest thing you could possibly do. Like when I used to buy protein powder, people were like protein powder? What, are you crazy? Whereas now, obviously, you know, you could order protein powder at 9 a.m. on a Monday and it'd be there by, by 8 p.m. because the fitness boom has, has, has taken off. So to kind of see it go from this almost illegal thing that nobody did to being crazy popular is nuts. And, and as soon as that does happen, as soon as you do put that pressure on yourself, your brain just goes crazy. And of course it's gonna go crazy because you want to look like that Instagram model every single day, even though the Instagram model doesn't look like that every single day, that's just the, you know, the mindset that they've, uh, they, they've put out there. So it's crazy, really. It's crazy. We should be doing these things that we love and enjoying it, but we don't. We just beat ourselves up constantly. It's just wild the amount of pressure there is to look a certain way. And I'm thinking back when I was a kid and I'm like, yeah, there was only a couple of us that really lifted weights and you knew who they were. And you could yeah. talk about things like the protein powders and the mega mass 6,000 and the <laughs> you have to eat big to get big. I mean, I went back doing that. And here we are today and social media and now everyone is showing their pictures and it's just it's a hundred times worse than it was because back in the day you didn't see all these images the only images really it was bad for women because they were so so thin at least when i was growing up the the models were the kate mosses and they're just like super thin but for men it wasn't as bad but i'm thinking back when i was a kid it was he-man I want to look like He-Man. And then when yep. I watched wrestling, it was the ultimate warrior. I yeah. went, I liked all the best built kind of wrestlers. So you obviously see that and you want to look like that. And as if that doesn't put pressure on you and at least put that bug into your head. Well, I want to look like this. I want to become like that. And will I ever look like the ultimate warrior? I mean, of course not. I mean, one in a million are going to do that. So unfortunately, that's just a harsh reality of the world. And for me, I keep saying, you know, Imagine that dream physique and I say, hey, you're not getting it. <laughs> Try to get halfway there and be happy with that. Exactly. I think you've you got to enjoy the process. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got to enjoy the process because you're right. Even so, let's say you did want to be, I don't know, 225 pound lean, which is crazy, right? That, that's a crazy physique. Even when you got there, then you're going to want to be 240 lean. Or then you're going to watch a video of, yeah, you know, Chris Bumstead or back in the day, Triple H or Hulk Hogan or the Ultimate Warrior. But now I want to look like that guy. It, it's just what the brain does. It wants what it can't have for one reason or another. And that, that happened to me too. Talking about how I got into wrestling, like it, one of the huge reasons was I saw Triple H when he transformed into this absolute monster i was like well that looks badass and that almost encouraged me to start going to the gym and i was so young at this point it took me honestly five probably about five years before i understood <laughs> you wasted it. keep doing what you're doing but this goal you have is a ridiculous goal because you're not that person and you're not walking the same path that that person is so you just got to start focusing on yourself and i think especially coming from someone like you greg to say that i think is awesome because I know loads of people that would look at your physique and go, holy crap, man, that's the greatest physique I've ever seen. But the fact that even you are like, well, I'm sure I could be better as well, goes to show it doesn't matter who you are. But that ties into pros as well. Like I've been watching Chris Bumstead's videos that he's been putting up as he's prepping for uh, for the Olympia. And even he's like, well, that's not that great. And that's he's like flipping Mr. Olympia. And even he's not happy. Yeah, absolutely. That I keep saying that. And you, you touched on this. You said the journey is so important. It's The journey is way more important than the destination. As Chris Bumstead said this, I've said this, that excitement you get from, from winning, like Chris, he won the Mr. Olympia. It's fleeting. It's like for a day or two, you're like, wow, I won this. And then it's like, now what? And then you got to win the next time. And yeah. it, it goes away so fast. I mean, I turn IPB Pro, I set world records and it's like, okay. And for two days, you're like, yes. And then all of a sudden... And now what? So if you don't appreciate every single day towards that goal, all the training you're doing and all the sacrifices, all you're doing, you have to love that because that day when you get that goal, when you actually get it, 
it's not a big deal. It's like you, you're happy for that one or two days. So, yeah. you know, why focus on achieving that goal when it's the journey that matters? So if you have that dream physique and you're like, and I know people are watching me like, yeah, well, the ultimate warrior, that's not realistic. Uh, ravishing Rick Rude, that's more realistic. You know, that's reasonable. And I'm, <laughs> are you kidding? Who's looking like <laughs> Ravishing Rick Rude? And then I say, you know, Chris Bumstead's my dream physique. Oh, Greg, you have such an, uh, a, a messed up uh, reality on what people want to look like. People just want to look like Wolverine. That's normal. Anyone can do that. You don't need great... Um, people, you're not looking like that. Like, people have this feeling like they can look a certain way if they just try hard. And if they didn't, it's because they didn't try hard enough. And I keep saying, hey, genetics matters a lot. Even if you put everything, your heart and soul into it, not everyone is born to have the dream physique, just like not everyone is born smart enough to be a surgeon or a doctor. You need some genetic. Doesn't mean you can't try, but please set realistic expectations and goals. And you're probably not going to look like Wolverine, even if you train for 10 years. Yeah, I love, I love how it does go from, well, I don't want to like Mr. Olympia, so I'll just go for this superhero drawing that was, you know, illustrated to be as muscular as it possibly, as it possibly could be. But it's true. And I don't understand why people get so funny about genetics. I'm probably going to ruin your comments now for this. But I know when I talk about genetics, every other comment, oh, no, we're talking about genetics, absolute rubbish. It's like, no, it's a fact. It's like me. Do you think I want to be bald? No. <laughs> but that was just, you know, I started losing my hair. And surprise, surprise, my brother lost his hair. My dad lost his hair. My granddad lost his hair. I didn't have a chance. So if anything, if you want to be mad at your genetics, go yell at your parents. Go yell at them and say, why did you have better genes? Damn it. But I don't understand why. I, 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 you know, I do understand. I take it back. I think people are probably... They want, they, it, like you've hit the nail on the head. They don't want to accept that they can't get that dream physique. So again, why don't we try and find as many uh, sort of external factors as possible? I can't possibly be my genetics. I can work through that. Or I could like that guy if I took steroids, blah, blah. You know, that, all that constant thing. It's like, don't, even if it is true, don't worry about it. <laughs> Just figure out what do you want to do and how far are you able to take it? And, you know, that, that's kind of as far as it goes. And also, if you go on websites like, I mean, not that I frequent it often, but if you go on stuff like, you know, Daily Mail, which is always out there snapping, I'm sure TMZ over there is probably a better example. And they're snapping all these people and you'll see someone that gets into okay shape, right? They look far better than they did. And the headline is always like, you know, big actor gets super huge jacked. And if you compare that to a bodybuilder, it's like, no, he's not. What are you talking about? But that's the point. We have skewed up our mind about what actual the general public sees as a, as a, a, a good physique. And I think you have to be self-aware about that as well. As soon as you get into the wrestling, the bodybuilders, the cartoons, the comic books, you are, again, you're putting it all way above your station. And look, it's awesome if you do have the genetics to be able to do it. But if you don't, you just have to accept it. Like I've had to accept this nonsense for the past few years and have people call me a bald a-hole on the internet. <laughs> I think it's common knowledge that wrestling is kind of is scripted, that there, there's not actually a big actual brawl that people probably kind of know. In, you know, Not that the, the moves don't hurt, but that people expect, hey, this is planned out a little bit. Yeah. What about boxing as of late? We have Jake Paul with these you know, these huge pay-per-views, people paying tons of money, he's winning match after match. What do you think? Is this scripted? Like, is it script? Is there any kind of planning that goes into it? Is this just paid wrestling? What, what is your opinion on that? I, I'm kind of in two worlds because on the one hand, I don't, you know, I saw Tyrone Woodley punch Jake Paul in the face pretty hard. And you can't tell your brain, you know, you don't get knocked out by that punch. You know, that, that's one you've got to ignore. However, on the flip side, he didn't really follow up as you would expect a fighter to follow up. So given, you know, the pageantry around Jake Paul and all the, all the hoopla, put it like this. If somebody put a gun to my head and said, you 100% have to give me a decision, nearly all of my being says, I'm sure it is legit. And I'm sure it's just smart. You know, Jake Paul going against Tyron Woodley, who is not a boxer, probably doesn't know how to follow up properly, doesn't have the experience. But I'm not sure, which I don't know what that says about me, or I don't know what it says about the fights. But there's always something in every single time that Jake Paul fights where my eyebrow goes up. And I'm like, I don't... That doesn't seem to be a fighter trying to win a brawl. But I don't know. Obviously, it's not as over the top as wrestling is. Of course not. You know, they, 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 they've been training hard. And I mean, look, I don't personally... I mean. 
I don't, say I don't like him, I don't know him, but you know, some of the stuff Jake Paul has done has rubbed me up the wrong way. But you cannot fault the man. His success is absolutely incredible. Like the dude is a megastar making millions of dollars. So, you know, why why on earth would you try try and criticize that? But as for the fights, I mean, what do you think? I, I'm I'm massively intrigued to see what you got out of it. Well, personally, I like Jake Paul. I think he's a, a genius at marketing. I think oh, he's yeah. doing his thing, making his money. And if I had the gun to my head, just like when I have natty or nots, I'm going the opposite. I think it's planned. I'm thinking that they know how much money there is. And as soon as he loses that match, no one is going to watch ever ever again. That's it. It's done. So if he loses that match, it's done. How yeah. easy it would be to, hey, hey, I'm going to pay you 200 grand for this fight. And let's just try to make sure that I win this somehow. You look good. Hit me. Don't make it look fake. But let me win. I'll give you a rematch. I'll pay you 2 million the next time. Yeah. And, and get a tattoo on your leg and we'll make it cool and be funny. And literally, I mean, these guys know what to do. You, yeah, they're punching them and it's going to hurt. But if you don't follow it up and if you don't keep on them, it's very easy to make a boxing match go slightly one sided. You just throw a few punches a little bit, just like a quarterback can make one bad pass and it can make the difference between winning or losing. I mean, that pitcher throwing that one fastball where he tells the guy the third pitch is going to be a fastball down the middle. That's all it takes. You don't need to um, throw a, a, a 50 mile an hour pitch every single time to throw a fight. So just to make it look co good, I, I really think that's what's going on here. And I think he's going to continue to win over and over again. And he's going to make millions and millions of dollars. This is my yeah. personal opinion. It might be oh, wrong. No. I, 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 I could argue it. Like I, I, I do not have the courage of my convictions to argue it because I think a huge part of me thinks that you're right or some part of me thinks that you does and you know I always say this because some people say oh you know it's it's this it's that it's rigged it's blah 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 it's business though this is the thing when it comes to business you're allowed to complain as much as you want and so you should but if they are making consistently crazy crazy buy rates of course they're going to keep doing it because there is a thirst out there to see these fights. And I'll be the first to put my hand up and say, I'm part of the problem. I love <laughs> these freak show fights because I, mean, I like boxing in general, but again, when you sort of have, not even, but I don't I get YouTuber turned boxer taking on MMA fighter turned boxer. He's like, how did we, who even signed off on this? <laughs> who even said that it was okay? And the trash talk beforehand. Yeah, I mean, I, I find the whole thing fascinating, but I, I, yeah, if somebody right now said, I've got to be on the, the defense team for the Jake Paul is having real fights thing. I would say you need to get somebody else. I, I don't have the evidence to try and to try and back this up. But if it is entertainment and you're getting entertaining stuff out of it and you're making a bunch of cash, it's hard to, like I say, it's hard to rag on them. More power to them. Fair play. Like even the people I don't like, they, would, you know, would I love to be in that position? Of course not I would. You know, of course, who wouldn't want to be in that position? That, as we've talked about, is the dream, so to speak. So I don't like it when people start kicking down on those kind of a guys. It's just like, well maybe it's better to sort of focus on yourself and try and figure out, well, how do I get there? You know, what did he do? What can I do to get there? Even if you don't like the person, I still think you have to, you just have to appreciate success, or at least I do, and credit where credit is due. Yeah, absolutely. And I find it's all about drama. Drama's taken over. Everything's about drama. If you look back to wrestling, I used to think it was real. And then it came out that it, it wasn't real. And I was like, oh my God, it's shocking. And I had friends for years. It's real. And it was a big argument back and forth for years with my friends. It is real. No, it's not. It is real. No, it's not. And now it's kind of, you know, it's not real. I think 99% believe this. But what if it came around that these Jake Paul fights are fake? And that even the UFC might be planned, like some of these comebacks. Oh my God, imagine if that happened because fight of the night, bonus, $100,000 and worth in the drama. And I don't know if you watch these freaking shows that Ali watches, uh, my, my Sexy Island Adventure or Hot or Not on This Island, or I don't know what these things are called. They're all on islands and they're all dating each other. And I'm like, this gotta be planned. They gotta have been like, you come in there and you make out with that girl and that guy and make drama. Oh, yeah. And cause it's exciting and you're watching, it's like, oh, it's reality. I'm like, babe, this is planned. This is staged. They, they probably told that. I'm like, I'm waiting for the guy to go and kiss the other guy. I'm like, I plan that. I get somebody in there, bisexual, go and make out with some guy. Yeah. And then the girl finds out that's, that's what I want to see. And I'm like, so it's not, I just think it's all planned stage. And if people find out later, what are they going to do? They're making their millions of dollars. Exactly. Oh yeah. And reality TV is nonsense. Like my girlfriend does exactly the same stuff and you can see it coming. It's like when you're watching a stereotypical movie, you're like that person's going to do this. And then that person's going to do that. But you're right. It's exactly the same thing. Nobody. I mean, I don't know whether you have it over here. The big show of that ilk over here is love Island, which I'm that's sure is the, the one. Same. 
Yeah. Love Island. Love Island, right? I'm and watching it every day with Allie, and I'm losing my <laughs> mind. I'm like, what is going on over there? She makes me watch it. Now I'm addicted, but I'm yeah. waiting for I'm like, if I was that guy, I'd walk over and kiss that other freaking dude, and everyone would be like, oh, my God, and the whole thing. Because they're like, make is. out with the person that you want. Who do you want to have a threesome with? I'm like, he should go and make out with some dude. Yeah, That'd be hilarious. Because, because that's going to get the most headlines the next day. That'd be right? some views. Everyone would be talking about that. I'm like, yeah. don't make out with the girl. Pick the guy. It'd be so good. <laughs> And it always works, right? I mean, I don't, again, I, I do not know how it translates across the pond, but there have been people that do love over Ireland over here. They come off the island and they are celebrities. Like they are covered I would in assume. column inches. Yeah, their, their Instagram goes through the roof. I presume that's why they go on there, which is why, of course, you'd be down for doing whatever you were told and trying to make it look real because you're literally being you're given the keys to the castle. Like if you do this, we will turn you into a star. I, mean, I want to be a star. That sounds, that sounds absolutely great. So why couldn't it be the same with boxing? What we've essentially established here is that everything is just professional wrestling. And I have said this about a lot of stuff, like, because everyone goes, oh, wrestling's so fake. I'm like, man, everything's fake. Everything's fake. As long as you are getting something from it, it, it doesn't even matter. So I don't even understand what the point of Love Island is. Like you go on there to find love, but then you can screw someone over for the money. Like it's such a confusing concept. Are like they even paid money? They're, like know. they're paid, like whoever gets a date at the end, they win. My, I don't know the concept. Love Island, I'm thinking, okay, I'm on the show and I'm going to have my Instagram's going to blow up. And if you have a sick body, I'm dieting for this. I'm going to go there. I'm not going to oh, eat yeah. the entire week on this little island. And like the relationship, you're there for what? I don't know, a week? <laughs> Is that real life? And then you leave the, who cares? You just do anything, say anything, do cause drama. I'd be stirring up so much shit. I'd be saying it. I'd be just, I just want everyone to remember that guy. And I want to be back on that show because I'm just a troublemaker. That's what I'd be doing. Absolutely. I would just, I just find the first person to walk up to him and just punch him right in the face. And then that would be entertaining. Like, That's what you want. Yeah. And it wouldn't be surprising if a producer said to one of the guys, go, go pick a fight with that guy. We really want you to pick a fight with that guy because look, there's no way that doesn't happen. Not just on Love Island, but on reality TV shows altogether. Because if you could pull the strings, you would pull the strings. Again, I don't mean to sort of flog a dead horse, but that's why wrestling became wrestling. Because some guy went, wouldn't this be better if we just decided what was going to happen? And someone went, yeah, that sounds really good. And surprise, surprise, people loved it. So, yeah, I think the, the, the drama debate is is a really fascinating one because people pretend they don't want drama, but people 100% want drama all of the flipping time. It's all about drama. And even with YouTube channels and I'm the drama queen when everyone knows I'm a friggin' circle. I'm not a man or woman. I'm a circle. Said this before. And it's like, why do you think I talk about drama? Because when I talk about a science video with Lane Norton or someone talking about studies and how they can be manipulated or whatever, no one's watching that. They want to see me say, this guy sucks and you're not natural and you did this and you <laughs> said that and you're this. That's what people want. And then they say, well, why do you keep doing it? I'm like, because 200,000 views in science, 50,000 views. You are telling me what you want. And I'm telling you right now, if they staged everything, baseball and all that, there'd be way more views. I want to see 100 home runs in a year. You know, fake that the entire year, put that guy. I want to see in the ninth inning, it's eight to nothing, and they come back and, and win nine to eight because we watch movies and it's all, you know, it, obviously it's a movie, it's staged, it's planned. They're going to show us a baseball game and it, they're going to come back and it's shocking and oh my goodness, and people talk about it. And if Nate Diaz wins in the fifth round in the last punch five seconds before the fights after losing every round, that's what people are talking about. So fake reality is the new reality. Totally. And it, again, it, it, it's all dramatic, isn't it? It's all, oh, I can't believe that happened. And oh, I can't believe he said that. And oh, I can't believe this went down. But I think ultimately, I don't know why people get so upset by it. As long as the, as long as the attentions are good. Do you know what I mean? Like if somebody was just kind of to create drama from, well, making stuff up, then you can be like, well, no, that's not cool. But I think if somebody has something to say and you genuinely want to say it and you have the courage of your convictions to say it, that's the cool thing about YouTube is that you can just go out there and say it and people can disagree with you and people can agree with you. And, you know, I've, you know, obviously you recently, you know, you've, you've had, um, I don't call them beefs. That's a bit too much, but back and forth, but then you've interviewed the same people and you've had conversations with them. And it's like, Oh, that's great. You see? So we can have these, we can have these conversations, but no, I get that as well. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. I, I haven't really had any of those sort of super dramatic videos on, on my channel. Um, but every now and then when I do touch on a subject, oh, I can't believe you're talking about that. It's like, everyone's talking about it. 
You know, everyone, everyone, what do you want me to do? Just pretend that it's not happening? That would be ridiculous. And the reason everyone's talking about it is like you say, is because there's that little bit of magic that is causing people to go on one side or the next, or there's something flamboyant about it or over the top. And yeah, that's what people love. I think, especially with YouTube, I think sometimes people can forget that it is just a free video service where anybody can put up any video. And ultimately it doesn't actually matter what anybody says because you can find another video instantly that will probably agree with your opinion anyway. And drama's great and I love drama. And the only thing I draw the line on is making shit up. I'm not gonna make up a yep. story that isn't true. I'm not gonna lie to someone, but I'm gonna tell you my opinion on it. And who wants to hear, uh, who wants to hear everything that they agree with? Who wants to hear just, I love this person, that person's so great, this is all. They wanna hear, I disagree. Uh, like even think of my boy Will Tennyson if he made a video and said Greg Doucette's an idiot because he said imagine how many people are watching that it could be true or not but like that's drama that people would listen to so when I talk about beef so to speak it's because people want to hear that and anything controversial that's where you get the most comments the most likes if I made video after video just saying what everyone already believes Every single person believes and agrees with me. I'm the liked guy. Oh, Greg, we like, you said everything that, you're such a nice person. Yeah, that's cool. It takes more courage to say something that people are gonna disagree with knowing you're gonna get hated on for saying it and still actually say that, which is what I keep doing. And I know there's gonna be mosquitoes and haters, but I have to accept that that's gonna happen because I have the courage to at least say what I think, even if people are gonna hate me for it. Yeah, I think that's the key as well. I think and that's probably one of the most endearing things about your channel in general and your videos is that you can tell that it's an honest, genuine reaction or an opinion. And I think as long as somebody is speaking from the heart and they mean it, you just, again, as long as it's not completely disparaging, like, you know, if you said something that was clearly, uh, not you never have just for the record, but, you know, hypothetically <laughs> speaking, if, if you said something that was just completely offensive, it'd be like, well, no, we can't, we can't do this. But that's the whole point. It's as far as I can see, it's, it's never got to that. It's like, here's what I think. And then a lot of the explosions come with the reaction <laughs> to what you said. It's like, I can't believe that you said this. It's like, it's just an opinion, man. And I think he articulated it pretty well. But as we were talking about before we, before we hit record, some people will just go into that comment section with a, this is what I'm saying. And no matter what you say to me, I will come up with the most ridiculous argument in order to prove myself right. But that's kind of half the fun with you. I mean, fun's way not the right word, but that's just, if you're going to be successful on YouTube or in the social media space, you are going to get people coming at you like that. And if they don't come at you like that, you're probably doing something wrong, to be completely honest, because they're probably going around every single person saying, this is wrong, that's wrong, I don't agree with this. That's just what they want to do. And, you know, you have to have a thick skin to be in, uh, to be in this game, as, as they say, but I don't get it. I, <laughs> I don't think I've ever felt the need to absolutely destroy somebody in a YouTube comment ever. I'll comment and go, that was an interesting, or that was a really good video, but never to go, this was the biggest part of crap. I just, who can't turn it off? The X is right there. Just turn it off and that person will vanish from your life. And one thing I learned is you cannot win an argument. I literally could okay. catch them on 4K doing it and prove and show, it. there's so much evidence, argue it perfectly, every study, everything, and say, here it is. And then the comment back is, no, and then they straw man you and say something different and say this about it. So there's no point. I try to win arguments and now I'm like, you can't win. And anyone that is against you or hates you, there is no bringing them back. Anyone that thinks that my cookbook is a cancer cookbook, they're not buying it. So why even try to convince them? So I don't worry about those people, but I, I try to do a defense against certain things to explain it to people who are on the fence. Like they're not haters. They're just not sure. Those are the people that you can kind of win over and come to your side and, and believe what you're saying. But you, you can't convince the haters. If somebody just purely, I just hate you, there's no <laughs> bringing them back. No, it's true because they want to hate you. That's it. That's their whole their job for the day. And they'll always watch your videos. <laughs> they'll always watch them regardless. But it comes from a very negative place. And, you know, for people that do watch my stuff, you know, I've spent my, not only my career, but my life trying to come from a positive place because you soon realize when you, I mean, look, you'd be a great example, right? We talked about this as well. One of the reasons I started doing my fitness videos, I've done a few, but they're really, I, you know, I thought, well, this Greg Doucet guy is doing it. And he, you know, I'm really enjoying them. Why, you know, why shouldn't I give that a go? That to me is a far better way to live your life. You know, this guy has inspired me to do something now I'm going to try as well, as opposed to, oh, Greg Doucette being successful. But like, what are you getting out of that? What do you get? Because I'm sure when you would, because I've seen sort of some of your old videos where it's kind of just you and a camera 
uh, you know, kind of just starting out on YouTube. And I'm sure when you were doing them, you would never, I'm sure you, you hoped it would get to where it is now, but I'm sure you, when it, now, I'm, well, my point being is now when you look back, I'm sure you're a bit like, how the, you know, how the flub did I do this? I can't, I can't quite believe I've managed to have this thing explode to the point where I've got a million subscribers and a cookbook and everything else. I honestly can't believe I got 100,000 subscribers and I yeah. can't even believe that I actually got 10,000 was just like shocking, <laughs> really. I mean, everything was shocking to me. So, and it kind of goes back to that whole like, enjoy the journey, not the destination. Cause I can tell you when I got 100,000 subscribers, it was just as exciting or more than when I got a million. There was no yeah. difference. The rise was so exciting and fun. And so I don't see it as like, if I got 10 million, I wouldn't be more excited than one. Like there's no difference. So I just do what I do cause I like making Making these videos and I like seeing what's happening and I do have a lot of haters but honestly a lot I might have a hundred thousand haters out of millions of people that watch videos it's not too bad those haters help me more than the people that like me I mean obviously the people that like my videos they're I mean it's what I like but as far as promoting the channel or doing good things for me the people that write the hate comments they're the ones that push you further because then all the people that are like wait a minute that person helped me lose weight they motivated me they did this they come to your defense and quickly write and then that comment section gets these hundreds of messages of back and forths among people and those comments they drive the algorithm and that just keeps helping so the more haters i have the more non-haters i'll get it's it's kind of weird but there's gonna always be those haters on the rise but that's really helping my channel so all the haters out there keep hating you're helping me more than you know <laughs> it's like a weird science experiment the more haters i have the more non-haters i get it doesn't make any sense on that note though because obviously you know a lot of the i don't know I, I, we'll go with hate because that's the word we're using you know you mentioned the cookbook and people going oh it's the worst cookbook ever when, why did you start that because an e-cookbook is it's one of those ideas where you're like, well, that's just the simplest idea ever. Why didn't I think of that? But truly, there was a, I mean, there was a few sort of dotted around the internet, but none that sort of sit on top of the, the mountain like yours does. I mean, what? I, I'm sure you've talked about it before and I've just missed it. But yeah, why did you decide, you know what, today is the day I'm going to take all these cool recipes that I've been mucking around with over the years. I'm going to put them in a cookbook. I'm going to throw it out there. Well, I honestly was coaching so many people and I, I couldn't handle that many people clients anymore and I would keep upping my prices for coaching because I was like I just can't handle it and I was talking about my diet and saying you don't need to eat chicken broccoli and rice and for years like decades here I've been the weird bodybuilder that would eat the French toast and the popcorns and the fancy recipes and everyone's like this doesn't work and then I was coaching people after people like IFBB pros and so on and they were eating like me and it, and it was working and so it started to take off and it's like wait a minute like, why are we eating this way? That Coach Greg guy, that makes sense. So I wanted to share that to more people. And I was like, I can't just keep coaching more people. That's not going to happen. So with this cookbook, you can put it out on the air or on the air, on the internet, and people will buy it. And I honestly was going to charge way more money. Like, people were like, oh, my God, it was $99. I, I was like... It has to be at least $199. It has to be, I was thinking maybe $500 to, yeah. like at least because I was charging a fair bit of money for coaching plans. I'm like, but if I put out this book, no one's going to hire me because they're going to have all my recipes. That's the whole point of my that coaching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the whole point of my coaching was to show people you don't need to eat this way. And if once the book's there, well, they won't hire me for coaching. And I was making a good amount of money coaching. Like that was my main income earning thing. So I was scared to put out this cookbook because I'm like, well, what if no one hires me for coaching? I won't make any money because my book will be out there. So I kept the price, you know, somewhat reasonable, somewhere between being really cheap and really expensive. So at $100 and when it came out, it was all the mosquitoes jerk how dare you charge that much? And I'm like thinking, but if I didn't, well, I might lose money on this because I'm losing all my coaching. So that's literally how it all came about and why I did it. And I'm glad I did because, you know, now I, I, I coach even less and I do even more of these recipes. New ones are coming out. It's just, it's the way to do it. An interesting thing you said there too is like, so was, is that actually the thing? So obviously you're doing your, you know, you're doing your pro bodybuilding and stuff and everyone's doing chicken broccoli rice and you're doing, yeah, the French toast and the chicken wraps. Were, were they actually like, oh, it's crazy Greg with his crazy recipes? A hundred percent. Everyone, like, 
I started in my kind of like in Halifax here, like, and I was coaching and there was a lot of different coaches and I was a bodybuilder and we all coached a certain way. And then some people were hiring me and they were showing their friends, like, let me see your diet. And they'd be like, well, it's this. And they're like, how can you eat that? And I'd be at the gym. They're like, what are you eating? Broccoli and white fish. And I'm like, Pfft. I was like, I'm eating popcorn and peanut butter and jam sandwiches or well, what? And then I'm winning the show. So being able to win myself and having my clients do so well, that really pushed it. And then other coaches, yeah. And then you know what happens. They start stealing all your recipes and instead copying. And that, of course, happened. And it just, it kept going and got bigger and bigger. And then when I got on YouTube, I'm like, I'm going to just, because I could only coach so many people locally. So that's literally, I got on YouTube to try to get more people to hire me for coaching. I didn't think, oh, there's some book I'm going to make. I went on YouTube and started making videos, kind of like Jeff Nippert, trying to sound smart and doing my thing, talking <laughs> about the whole thing. And I'm like, no one's watching me. I'm giving out the information. I don't have the science editing and the stuff like these guys. So I'm like, just like, I don't know what to do. And so I gave up. I was like, this is just too hard. And I'm like, screw it. I'm going to put a freaking phone on a can of tuna and I'm going to talk and I'm going to rant and then I'm going to say it the way I think. And I'm going to give a shit about sounding smart. I'm just going to talk out of my head. And that's what people liked. And so over the years, people are like, look how different Greg is. He talks different. He does this. He's, he's not real. I'm like, well, before I did videos and I was trying to be like, well, I have to be like this and like that and talk perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, so I've changed, I've changed into what I wanted to do from the get-go but didn't have the courage to do it because I thought, well, people are going to see my videos and if I don't sound smart, they're going to make fun of me and the whole thing. And I'm like, once I said, I don't give a shit. If you like this video or not, I was just going <laughs> to say what I think. That's when it took off. So my big advice to people, don't care what people are going to think. Say what you want to say. Just don't be a complete asshole. Don't wish, you know, harm on other people. Don't make fun of people's children and stuff like, you know, like some people have done. But, you know, speak your mind and, and say what you think and back it up. Don't lie. And that's what I've done. And I think that's the best advice. Oh, totally. Especially the way you mentioned how you evolved as a YouTuber. Like I get that all the time. Because if you go back and watch my super early videos, I mean, I'm talking about sort of way, way back when I was just learning about you. It wasn't even about fitness. I was, I was terrified. Of course I was. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So you watch other people and you try and copy them. Whereas now, you know, I feel more comfortable in my own skin or whatever the right word would be. And I get people message me going, you're so fake now, Simon, with that fake voice. I'm like, no, this is my real voice. The other one was the fake voice because I was trying to put on like, almost like a TV presenter voice. That's what, you know, oh, hello. I, was, I thought that's what you had to do. But now they think, yeah, they think, I get it all the time. Your voice is fake. And I was, my voice is fake. Do you know how hard that would be if every time I did a video, I'd think, right, where was my voice last time I did it? But honestly, every YouTuber I know that has become successful has gone through that. They start off and they're like, yeah, got to be like Jeff Nippard, got to be like this guy, got to be like that guy. But then when they just do it more and it becomes more comfortable, then the real person comes out and there's always that guy going, well, uh, he's sold out. <laughs> he's like, no, this is me now, <laughs> damn it. It's so frustrating, but look, I, I don't even... Fair play to them, right? If they if they, if they want to engage with anything like that, good, because YouTube likes engagement. So just just kind of keep doing it. But I do think that's fascinating about the diet stuff, because of course, you know, when I started lifting weights, that's all I did. All I did was chicken rice broccoli, chicken rice broccoli. Ate way too much rice. Got way overweight. Didn't know what <laughs> didn't know what was going on, and it absolutely sucked. And then you know, when all of a sudden it was twofold. When you do learn that you could have a bit more fun with your diet, like oh man, this is great. But also when it gets backed up, that's why that that was my thing about the cookbook. I thought the cookbook was so good because it was coming from somebody who could literally show off medals and trophies and records and say, well, I ate like this and I got like this. So even if you don't want to believe it or it doesn't work for you, that's cool. But it absolutely can work for you because. And I thought that was massively important because. Is I still get that now when I say, you know, I lift weights and they're like, oh, do you just like don't eat any carbs and just eat chicken all the time? It's like, that's a very <laughs> stupid diet. If you did that, you're not going to have any muscle. You're going to be the tiniest person ever. But, you know, breaking that stigma down, I always thought is important because it gets more people into the gym. And there is a, I hate the term, but there is a gatekeeper community around the gym that wants to keep people out. And then there are select few, but I hate them. I hate them so much. It's like, man, we all came into this place sucking. Every single one of us came in as a weedy kid or whatever it was, not knowing what the hell we were doing. And the fact that you now want to own that space, I can't stand it. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Absolutely. Fitness is for everyone. And I, I wonder if you noticed this. Do you notice how a lot of us, me and you, because I watch a lot of your videos, other people like Derek, we all have similar topics. Do you notice how that comes up with, we all have similar topics and I've been accused of, you know, I'm stealing other people's oh, ideas yeah. and topics <laughs> a lot. And I'm like, sometimes I see their video and I actually do the same video. Other times I did the video and they did the same one. But I just noticed how 
almost all the YouTubers tend to go over the same topics. And, and I have a theory. Something comes out like a study and we all get it. And we have people that watch my channel, your channel, our channels, and they recommend, I don't know if you get ideas from your, your subs yeah, yeah, and your yeah. fans. I get that. And we are all presented the same thing. They probably write me and they write you and they write Derek and they write everybody. Talk about this person, this weight loss, this study. And so we end up with all the same videos and people are probably thinking we're all stealing each other's idea, but it's just, that's what's trending in the world. And that's just what we happen to talk about. Yeah, I get it all the time. I got it the other day. Someone said, Miller, you're just Greg Doucette, more plates, more dates, light. And I was like, there's only so many things I could, if I don't talk about what they're talking about, the channel is just going to be sat at a camera looking at you. Because, you know, and I, the thing is, I don't, even if you came on here right now and said, Simon, I stole all your ideas, I'd be like, good, great, because I stole <laughs> That's them from a somebody else. You know, like I, I, a, it's a compliment, absolutely. But I didn't make up any of these things. They're real things that are happening in the world that just happen to land on my, on my doorstep. So no, I, I don't understand that at all. I find that a really odd, a really odd criticism. If anything, I think it's cool. Like if a interesting topic comes out, I want to know what you're going to say about it, or Derek, or, or you know, Shredded Science, or whoever. You know, I want to know what, 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 what's their take on it. Do they agree with me? Sometimes I'll do a video on it, and then I'll watch yours, and you'll have a different take, and I'll go, "Was I wrong?" <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, and I think that's great. I think it's great to question yourself like that and kind of take other people's information into it. But and there are some things that you just have to talk about, like they just absolutely are. I mean, I know I mentioned him earlier, but you know, when the, the sort of we all clamored to try and pull V Shred off his off his pedestal. You know, I think that was an important cause to try and make sure so it wasn't just one person saying it. We're all saying it. But then I also think we all bring our own individual personality and trait to that subject, which I, I just I don't I do get that all the time. though. One person said the other day, Simon, you'll never get as big as Greg or Derek because you just rip off their stuff all the time. But that's just like, I don't even know what that means. What are you talking about? But again, it's what we said earlier. That person, what I don't get is what are you mad about? <laughs> Let's say that I did. Let's say I watched one of your videos and I just did my own version. You can get mad, but why is this other person mad? I don't get it. It's, it's so bizarre. Yeah, haters just want to hate. And I find it's funny because when I was a smaller YouTuber, by smaller, like, you know, under 100,000, I could do any video and everyone loved every video. And then as yeah. you get bigger, all of a sudden they want to shit on you. <laughs> when you're a smaller <laughs> channel, you're underrated. Your channel is so under, oh my goodness, you should have way more followers. And then when you <laughs> get them, oh, why do people like you? You were good in 2020. You're so old news. You, No one's watching your channel. And I'm literally, I'm on Social Blade every week and I get 15 to 16 million views a month. And I'm like, I'm literally more popular than I was four months ago, but all the comments are, you're a has-been, you're washed up, you have no good topics, we don't like you anymore. And I'm like, I'm doing the exact same stuff I've always done. Like, I sorry. I love, I love how people care about your view count. Isn't that amazing? They care, they're going through each one of your videos going, well, that was 200,000, but that was 175. Oh, that's 400. It's like the view count on YouTube is a flip of a coin anyway. It depends what mood YouTube's in that day to begin with. So, you know, there is no point. Of course, you need to focus on it because you're a businessman and that's your analytics and your metrics and your numbers. And if things drop, you need to look at all the, oh, what do I need to do? But outside of that, nobody should be worrying about what the hell anybody is doing on YouTube. I think, and I'm going to sound well cheesy now, but I mean it. I think the worst thing about YouTube is you do get these crazy big numbers and you forget about that one individual person that is watching it going, oh man, isn't this great? Because you don't see that after a while. You know, it's like you said, you got 10,000, then all of a sudden it's 50,000, 100,000, and you kind of just get lost in this, in this numerical fantasy land. But, you know, the, the things that I love the most are so some days, of course, you know, I'm a human being. I'm like, oh, the channel's not doing very well. Oh, it did better last month. What have I done wrong? And then you get an Instagram DM or a Twitter DM or an email. Someone just saying, oh, man, Simon, you know, I watched this video. It really inspired me to go back to the gym. And you're like, boom, that is, there you go. Obviously, we need to make money from this stuff. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do it. But knowing that that actual core message still gets through to people, that's the greatest thing ever. And when I, when I read, I still can't believe that anybody, I got one the other day with somebody saying that, they started watching my fitness videos because they see my wrestling videos and they weren't into fitness, but it was inspired them to go back to the gym. And I was like, I'll put that on my gravestone. Like, <laughs> that's the coolest thing ever. 
Absolutely, you gotta remember the good things, forget the bad. As far as like, I'm just thinking of comments. So I used to write comments all the time. I'd read all the people, I'd comment, I'm like, I'm gonna be engaged, I'm gonna show you that I care about what you're saying, all this. <laughs> wow, you, you respond to everybody, I was reading every single comment. Now I write a comment, you're a narcissist, you read people's <laughs> comments and you respond and I'm like, when I started, that was one of my best qualities and I want to show that I still care and I read comments, but now I'm just a narcissist because I'm doing exactly what I did my entire life, doing these YouTube comments and you can't win. So oh. you just got to, you know, you focus on the good, just forget the Exactly, exactly, you can't win. It's the same way that people are going to accuse you of being on every drug under the sun, even though you have been completely transparent about your current <laughs> protocol. But they've already decided. Because again, it ties to what we said earlier. It makes them feel better about their own physiques or their own things they're struggling with, which really is kind of sad because it would be great if they were able to get in touch with that and actually go and get help and put them. I, that sounds, I don't mean that sounds way more dramatic than I meant it to, but I meant get themselves back into a more positive place where they could actually, you know, uh, just take information at face value as aside from from getting really, really upset about it. But, you know, it's the nature of the beast when it comes to YouTube. And I've almost I almost take it as a compliment these days that anybody wants to say anything on my videos. So if it's good, great. If it's bad, great. The fact that you care and you're that engaged enough that you wanted to tell me this, you know, I always take that moment and go, let that initial frustration just, just calm down. And remember how really cool it is that even if this person thinks you're the worst human being on the planet, they still took time out of their day to let you know that you suck. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what? Thank you very much. I mean, and taking this analogy back to wrestling, it takes, I think, more talent to be the villain, to go out there and get the entire crowd booing at you and hating you, and that's your role, and uh, bring it, you suck, you suck, the whole thing. So when somebody takes the time to watch my video, press the dislike button, and make a comment, you just watched my video and commented, helped the out. How can I ask for more than that? I mean, really? Exactly, exactly. And I don't, and that's the, I remember there was a channel, I can't remember what it was, it was years ago now, somebody in the comments I'm sure will know it, where his whole goal was just getting as many dislikes as he could. But YouTube <laughs> didn't know that. YouTube just knew, oh man, you know, interaction, engagement, and his channel did great. And I thought that was, you know, I thought that was wonderful. So, I mean, YouTube is a crazy, crazy thing. It really, really is. But the reason I love it is for many reasons, like, I started doing fitness stuff, what, say a year and a half ago. And if you had told me March 2020, I think it was, that here we would be in September 2021 and we'd be having a chat, I'd be like, well, that sounds like a pretty good progression. <laughs> you know, that sounds like a pretty good thing to aim for. So it really does have a lot of good in it. Like, I, I love how it kind of, uh, I mean, the bad does overweigh the good just because the bad people are so loud. But there is just so much good in it. And um, again, you know, I, I just think it's awesome that it can lead to places like this. Yeah, and I mean, as soon as you said that some people are trying to get negativity, I was thinking, is that vegan gains? Like, literally, I'm thinking, <laughs> is that his goal? And how do we know he's not a mastermind and he's faking the whole thing? He's planning, he's like, the only way I can get people to like me is to be hated. And so he says all these things, but then he takes it too far. Like, how do we know? Like, maybe, like, he's done probably 10 videos of hating me, like, so much. But maybe, if I met him in real, in real life, maybe he'd be like, hey, man. Like, who knows? We don't know how people act. Like, some of these nattier knots I've done on people, like Cali Muscle, and, you know, different guys, and they just, like, they hate me. You know, Chef Rush, he didn't like me so much. Oh, yeah. That if was I bad saw one. these guys, would they be like, yo, I hate you? Or would they be like, cool? Like, who knows? I don't know. I think people are a lot more angry on the internet than they are in real life. Like, I, I've only had one. I won't name names because it's not fair, but there was one guy who used to just rinse me in the rest. It was a wrestling guy. He used to just rinse me, and then I bumped into him when I was over in America years ago for a wrestling show, and he was the nicest guy ever. <laughs> I was like, dude. And then I watched his show the next week, rinsing me again. <laughs> I was just like, so ridiculous. But I thought to myself, good for him. If that's getting him some kind of traction, I will take that as a, you know, I will take that as a massive compliment. I never understood why people got mad at you for the Natty or Not videos though. Because, I mean, all you're saying is, I mean, it, it doesn't make it, I, I suppose maybe they get inundated with comments, but they must get that anyway. Because a lot of the guys that you do it on are huge. And you know, the, the, the common practice is you see a huge guy and you go, that guy's on steroids. So just because somebody else pops up and goes, yeah, he's probably, he's probably on steroids. I can't imagine that it's, they get any more, 
yeah, sort of, you know, social media engagement than they did already. But yeah, you do see some, well, it goes two ways. Some people take it as a massive compliment and they're like, oh man, that was awesome because it's nice to, you know, be involved. And then other people just absolutely melt down as humans. Yeah, I mean, I think some people just, they don't want anyone to comment on it. It's just like, don't ask, don't don't tell. And so they're, they're worried it's going to hurt their business when in yeah. reality, it usually helps people. Like when I, I do a natty or not someone, whether it's natty or not, those people usually get more views and more followers. And it's just my opinion. Like, how do I know? I'm not their, I'm not their doctor. I don't actually know <laughs> if they're natural or not. I didn't speculate. So I'm, that's all. I'm just calling people out. But What's funny is in, in the in the DMs behind the scenes, they'll write you and they'll be like, thanks for this or, or not thanks for that. Or some people will hate you for it. And some people are like, I don't care at all. Like Michael Hearn doesn't care at all. And I pick on him a lot in videos, but he doesn't <laughs> care. But other people, oh my God, it's like their life ended because I talked about them. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference anyway, because no matter what you say, somebody go, no, he's wrong. So, like you did that, that time you did one on me thank you very much by the way that was a great day for me really appreciate it <laughs> the reason i found out you were doing it is because somebody had tweeted me and gone miller i still think greg is wrong and i was like what does that mean like, it took me about five minutes before i was like i still think because i didn't think of you at first i was like greg why would this, he say no this? Yeah, no do say, <laughs> and then i saw the video i was like oh my gosh i replied I said are you responding to it? he goes yep i was like that is unreal <laughs> It's just absolutely unreal. But again, it's people have already made their minds up, right? And I think it's almost like when somebody watches a review on YouTube, they, they watch it. More people are likely to watch it after it's a movie, right? They're more likely to watch that movie review after they've watched it because they want somebody to agree with them. And they want somebody to say, oh, that's the best movie I've ever seen or that was the worst movie I've ever seen. And then it kind of makes them go, oh, sweet. You know, I found someone I got common ground with. So if you have seen a Mike O'Hearn or whoever, and you're like, oh man, that guy's got to be juiced to the gills. And then somebody who was in super duper shape goes, oh yeah, they're like, yes, you know, but then you get the other way as well. I just, look, there's no point. I love Natty or Not videos. So there's no point in me criticizing them. That's the reason I found you. I think that's how I got into Derek at first as well, through a random one that he'd done. They're just fun and they're just silly in a, in a good way, right? It's just, here's my opinion on somebody's physique in the same way that you would do that for any kind of, uh, entertainment medium i suppose but i suppose it's cool that people take your opinion as read like if you say, you say <laughs> it that's it it's 100 percent correct yeah and it's funny because i actually would say that i actually say people are natural quite often i just oh, yeah. don't pick out everybody so and the best videos really are the ones that are the most controversial if i say hey i think that uh the mr olympia champion is 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 not natural uh, ronnie coleman probably took something Jay Cutler probably is that interesting but when I take Chris Bumstead's photo at 18 or 7 you know and I say that guy was natural here and not natural there and people are like oh, well how that's <laughs> controversial and so people like talking about that and they're like Greg you're an idiot but then someone like Philion, who 95% of the time just takes the biggest guy that's obviously jacked and says they're on something well it's very easy to make a video saying what everyone else thinks. It's a lot harder for me to pick someone that looks crazy good and to say, I actually think that guy's natural. That's the controversial video. And so then I get called, you're an idiot. You got this one wrong. And it's like, <laughs> maybe I did, but some people are in fact freaks. And if you take the best bodybuilders in the world, like Ian Valere, name any guy in the Mr. Olympia get make them natural they're all whooping my ass i could take test and trend for six years straight take those guys in the top 10 mr olympia make them natural they're still making me look pathetic and it's just the way it is their genetics are just that much better so when you say this guy looks natural well if they have the best genetics in the world they can actually do it that, that's it right it's it's like i think i don't know why bodybuilding doesn't get more credit for the sport that it is like i get that asked all the time do you think it's a sport i'm like absolutely because, you know, let's take football or soccer over here. You know, people are getting picked up at like five, six years old to go to academies because they show a natural ability for playing football. They have never, and no one's taught them anything. They are just born into this world. And for one reason or not, you know, they are bespoke the power of football <laughs> skills, you know, onto them. And that's the same with bodybuilding. It's all a genetic, thing. We're going back to genetics, but these people have been born onto this earth and they just have these superior genetics. That if they train right and do this and do that and all the things you have to do, can rise to the top of their field and win medals and trophies and, and get a bunch of cash. But I don't know, I guess it's because it's still somewhat of a niche. I mean, it's nowhere near as much as a niche as it was, but again, over here, the Mr. Olympia, 
unless you're into bodybuilding, nobody's talking about it. It's just me and a bunch of, you know, a bunch of my mates. I would love it if Mr. Olympia was sort of broadcast at prime time on a Saturday night or something. I, I'd be well into that. I don't know what sort of the general public would think about it, but I start, I find it crazy. I mean, exactly what you just said. These are specimens who are now taking themselves to their genetic limit, which just happens to be so far above everybody else's. And yet that's not a sporting endeavor. I find I, it really bothers me. I find it crazy. Oh, absolutely. Just to show you just how much genetics is the Kylie Jenner, the transgendered, uh, he won the Olympics in 74, 76. I forget what year. I was watching a documentary on this, on, on this while well, he's now female. He was a male. He was not even an athlete. No one, he didn't know he was good at sports, nothing. And he was in grade five and they had some kind of a race at school and he won the entire school. And they're like, <laughs> You can run like that. And then from yeah. there on, it's like, you're on the track team. You're on this team. Then he got into the decathlon and he's like, okay, I guess I'll do this. And showed up and broke records and was in the Olympics after like a couple of years training. And then the next Olympics won the gold medal. And it's like genetics. I could train my ass off and I'm not running the hundred meters in under 11 seconds. And I'm certainly yeah. not high jumping seven feet tall. <laughs> it's genetics. And people just, they forget that no matter how hard you work, you need to be born with that natural ability to just be amazing all these superstar athletes that they're so genetically blessed the lebron jameses and so on oh, yeah. it's just shocking how much talent they actually have oh totally like i remember it was years and years ago but there was a kid in my school who had been picked up by or at least was being offered to come to you know these big football clubs and he was he was he was in a different year he was quite a few years below us and we were all playing football at lunchtime or whatever it was and we were sort of passing the ball around and somebody kicked it to him and again, he was probably like, we well, must have been 13, 14. So he's like 10, 9, whatever it was. And he just trapped the ball. <laughs> he just pinpointed past it back. And I think all of us looked at each other like, I don't want to play football anymore. Because <laughs> it just, it's just there. It was just an innate, you know, an inner thing that that person had. And we all accept that when it comes to sports. But when it comes to bodybuilding or lifting weights, we all have to, oh no, it's this and oh no, it's that. It's like, it's not, people are just lucky. Like, I would like, if some, someone knocked on my door right now and said, Simon, we're gonna change your genetics. I'd be like, man, I'm leveling up. I will change my genetics now, but you just can't. So that's when the goal has to become, what can I do with what I've got? Because it, if you get down to sort of anyone, it's hard, but anyone can get down to six, 7% body fat with the right training, the right coaching. If you're walking around at six, 7% body fat, even if your sort of muscle mass isn't that much, people are gonna look at you like, man, that's shredded. <laughs> like that's, Absolutely. that's a shredded guy. And it's just, when you start, you know, yeah, contemplating everything else where I want to get sort of super duper muscles as well. It's like, well, yeah, that's, don't even worry about that. Figure out where your limit is. And if you really want to have that turn in a, you know, turn your head in an airport kind of physique, just get mega ripped. I mean, you, you get, I've never seen, it's like, um, uh, is it Tristan Lee? Is that his name? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's so ripped. What well, I'm just like, how is this even possible? It's incredible. Like, it's absolutely incredible. And for the most part, most people could, everyone can get as lean as Tristan Lee. Um, not everyone can maintain it because no. they would just have no energy and feel like shit, yeah, yeah, including yeah. me. Um, not everyone can have big muscles. Anyone can get shredded. If you don't eat, eventually your body fat will drop to 3% and you will yeah. die. That's just how it works. <laughs> but not everyone can have the big biceps so the problem is we're comparing ourselves to other people without comparison there would be no unhappiness you only are unhappy because you see others who you think are better than you think of it if you're the only human being on this planet you could bench press 100 pounds you think wow that's a lot yeah who else can do it if you're the only person on this planet that can see you're the only one that can see you lead the world it's just because you're comparing yourself to other people so anytime you're upset or or you don't feel good about yourself it's only because you are comparing yourself to what you feel is better grass is always greener on the other side people are always going to compare themselves to other people but the more you can compare yourself to you and just be the best version of yourself the better and more happy you're going to be yeah the worst uh phrase i always hear you're talking about a bench press, a deadlift, a squat, and the sentence always starts with, I can only. I'm like, stop right there. What do you mean I can, and always, I can only lift, you know, 50 kilograms. I can only lift 75 kilograms. It's like, no, no, no. If you were only, let's say it's January and you're squatting 50 kilograms 
and then come July, you're squatting 60 kilograms. Well, that's incredible. You've added 10 kilograms to your squat in half a year. That's absolutely tremendous. And sounds like you've been doing progressive overload and training hard and eating hard and doing all of these things, but they don't. Everybody has to talk things down. And I'm guilty of it too. But I'm absolutely guilty of it too, because again, you get worried about- I've how seen you deadlifting the other day in a video and it was right. 200 kilo. I am only deadlifting this because I yeah, used yeah. to and, and so it <laughs> feels bad. It's only, but yet- the person's watching be like, yeah, only I've been training 10 years. I can only do a hundred. That's what yeah. they're thinking. So in comparison, it's true, but I did it because it's like a, a, a coat of armor, right? I need to protect myself against these people that are going to go, well, that's not a lot of weight. <laughs> it's just like, I don't get why we do it, but I think it's okay to do it. But I think you've got to be self-aware about it as well. You've got to be again, like we're doing now just to go, oh, well, that was a dumb thing to do. Cause then you just chill your mind out. You know, you just chill your mind out because fitness not fitness but i mean the gyms all over the world could vanish tomorrow and we as a human race would still be okay like i'd be more bored than i am now because i like going to the gym but you know we we would carry on and i think it's so easy to it's so easy to put too much stock into it as opposed to just go because the reason i keep doing it and the reason i love it is because every day not only does it give you i love a routine but it gives you a way to better yourself every single day. That's my favorite thing about it. Like I'm gonna make my diet better today. I'm gonna make my, my gym session better today. You know, I'm gonna, I don't make my cardio better today, whatever the hell it's going to do. It always gives you that something, even if you don't have anything else on. I mean, I'm lucky that I do have a lot of stuff on, but I think for people that are looking to sort of fill their lives with some sort of, you know, semblance of anything, that's why the gym is so cool because it's always there and you can trial and experiment and this didn't work, so I'll do this and that and you know, ups and downs and lefts and rights. And we forget about that and really quickly it becomes, <laughs> I'm not 220 and 6% straight away. That's all that it is. And it's just, no, you're not. And no matter how good you look, somebody's always going to walk in and they're going to look bigger and better than you. But that person may be looking at you going, oh, you know, his bicep's pretty good. Because you just don't know. You don't know what's going on in people's heads, which is the problem with Instagram. Because again, it just looks like perfection constantly. But I bet if we pulled that camera back, you would see the, well, you would, you would see the setup and the production. And all of a sudden it would make a lot more sense. And the real reason people that they're saying the only, or I can only bench press this, or I can only do that, or I only do this, or I only make this much money is because of fear. People yeah. don't have confidence. They are fearful and don't have the confidence to say what they think or to be judged. So if you say I can only bench press 450 pounds, it sounds different than if you say I can bench an amazing 450 pounds. I'd rather you be proud of it and say what you can do than to say only. It's like when somebody says, you, you give a compliment to someone. Wow, your hair looks amazing. Really, this thing, it, ugh. wow, that's an amazing dress. This whole thing, everyone d just has to downplay everything. No one can just be like, thank you. I'm very proud of my hair. I spent an hour on it this morning and this outfit, I really spent a long time and I'm, I'm very happy in this. No one feels they can say that because we've been brainwashed into thinking we can't brag or even speak highly of ourselves. I'm like, why can't every day be like a job interview? Be confident and proud of yourself and say, I can do this. I'm good at that. Rather than I suck and I'm not very good and I'm fat and look at this and Jeff Favalier saying, oh, I got roles here. And I'm like, who are you talking about? You know, everyone has to downplay it. Yeah, I'm lean, but I only weigh 180 pounds. Like that is the problem. People can't actually say what they think because they're fearful that other people are going to point the finger and say, you're showing off and you're a narcissist and you're cocky. They can't just say what they actually think and be confident. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I fall into that category, you know, I, I'm, I'm self-aware with it. And I think, again, like I say, when you realize you're doing it, it helps massively because it's that classic thing. Like you can't be an insane person if you know you're insane because, you know, by definition, insanity, you wouldn't pick up on these vibes. I, I said this the other day and somebody went, well, that's not true. I was like, it's just a broad statement. I'm not trying to get into exactly what to what insanity means. But yeah, it, I think that there is a real, there should be a real push to get people to be proud of, of their achievements because pride is such an, I get, don't get me wrong. You can be, you know, pride and arrogance, of course, come hand in hand. But again, it goes back to the squat conversation. If you do get to that 60 kilogram squat and you don't pat yourself on the back, I mean, not what was it for, because you have got stronger. You know, that's just a physical attribute that you've increased. But you're going to ruin your motivation eventually, because again, the, a motivation comes from being excited and being happy and, you know, being focused on, on where you're going to get to. But I do, I totally get it. I totally understand it. And it probably, it probably is worse these days, given that, 
if if I had done that deadlift video and gone, man, watch me smash this 200 kilogram deadlift, and then gone, yeah, look, I'm the best. I bet you, because actually a lot of the comments were lovely. So shout out to my community for being nice. But I bet if I had done it that way, Pete, there would have been way more. It's not that much, Miller. Calm down. What are you talking about? Because I don't know. I can't answer the question as to why, as a, I, I, other than what you've just said. Because let's say that you did that video and you smashed out like a really strong deadlift. My initial reaction would be like, that was a great deadlift. Oh my gosh, I want to improve my deadlift now. Which again, goes back to what I was saying earlier about how it's so much better to shoot upwards than kick downwards. Like it just is, it just, it completely changes your mindset and it completely it gets you excited about these little things. Like I bet you, if I, you had done a video like that and I hadn't been deadlifting for ages and I love deadlifting, it would have, again, it would have lit that fire under me. Oh man, I need to get back to deadlifting, which is so much better than just oh, this crap deadlift, Craig. What does that even mean? What is, even if you deadlift the bar, awesome. You deadlifted the bar, good for you. You picked up 20 kilograms and you, you know, you put it back down on the floor. That's, there's no rules. There's no laws in what you should be doing. It's, it, it's truly baffling and it's truly strange. And I guess it comes down to the idea that the fitness world sometimes cannot be as harmonious as you would probably want it to be. Like, I think there could be a lot more sort of, you know, theoretical hugging and patting on the back and, oh, yeah, you know, good good job, kid, as opposed to, no, you need to be smashing records <laughs> before we even get into a conversation about what you've just done. Absolutely. I mean, I, I challenged Will Tennyson to a squat competition. I remember, yeah. Will Tennyson beats me. I'm proud of him for beating me. Like, good on you for beating me. I have no shame in that whatsoever. And I'm getting private messages from, well, from one guy in particular, millions of followers making fun of me for Will beating me. And I'm like, who cares? Like, it's so ridiculous. Like, I don't care. Like, yes, I've broken world records in the bench press or deadlift. And I say it and people are like, you're bragging, you broke. I broke the record. And when I used to enter a, a powerlifting contest, people would write me, how are you going to do? I'd say, well, I expect to win by approximately 110 pounds and probably break the world record by about six or seven pounds. You show off. I'm literally saying exactly what I believe to happen to the letter. I'm not exaggerating. And to me, showing off or, or bragging would be, I'm going to beat everyone when you can't or you're not going to. When you literally say what you're going to do or you expect to do, you're just saying what you're, what am I supposed to say? Well, I, I just hope I don't suck and shucks darn it, I'm probably gonna get embarrassed when you're the world record holder. Like, it makes no sense. So people have this thought in their minds, they, they just can't say what they think. They have to downplay everything. You can't just be honest and say, like I'm very mathematical, statistical, numerical. I'm just gonna spit the facts. I spit the facts and you get Yeah, no, it's true. And it's, uh, tying it back into wrestling too. It's the, it, it's the same kind of a mindset. Like if you, when you're behind the curtain, if you're like, oh, I'm gonna suck. And you know, this guy said this, you go out there and it's, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a bad match, but when you look at yourself back on video, you know, your, your shoulders are up and up. You can just say you're protected. You can see body language wise, you're trying to protect yourself. Whereas if you just think, ah, man, screw it. I'm gonna go out there and just do my very best. Your you know, chest is out and your arms are out. It's just a massive, you know, it's, it's, a, huge, it's a huge physical difference. And I mean, especially in wrestling, man, I tell you, the amount of mistakes you get in wrestling, obviously, because it's two guys or two girls or whoever trying to put on a, we'll go with choreographed performance, you know, of course things are going to go wrong. You get sweaty, you forget things, you know, you smash into each other because there's a lot of throwing around. And the straight was like, oh, now, you made a mistake. You are rubbish. It's like, imagine you were a data analyst and you accidentally pushed the two as, a, as opposed to the one. And somebody just shouted through the window, you're the worst data analyst ever. It's like, what are you talking about? The, you know, I, I think human beings in general are allowed to make mistakes, but it is almost considered a huge problem if you do. And I don't like, especially going back to your powerlifting stuff, you are entering an elite competition. So, I mean, I, I've never spoken to anyone or seen an interview with anyone that was an elite competitor who didn't have the mindset of I'm going to win. Because how, how can you? How can you win if you don't think you're going to win? If you go in there, say, especially with weightlifting, my word, if you go in there and think, I've got to pick up this amount of weight and your brain goes, you can't do it. Well, you're not going to do it then, are you? Like, it's, it's, it's like when uh, sometimes I'm training with my girlfriend and bless her heart, you know, she didn't do it on purpose. But I will ask, you know, she, she'll be loading up one area of the bar and I'll be doing the other area of the bar. And I'll say, I oh, know, you know, put on this weight and she'll put on a little bit more weight. And I like to say it's a bench press and I'll just do it. And I'll go, wait a minute. And you look at it and actually one side of the bar only like, you know, sort of five kilograms more, but because your brain had decided that this is perfectly lined up, 
it didn't make a difference. Obviously, if it was like 40 kilograms, oh, yeah. I would go like that and you'd die. But I honestly believe if I had known that before doing it, you know, my right side would have been like, oh no, it's, you know, it's all off balance. Cause you have to have that mental fortitude if you're going to win a flipping competition. Of course you do. I don't, I don't understand how you could not. I mean, like Cristiano Ronaldo, who last night as we're doing this conversation, just he scored more goals in men's international football than anybody in the history ever. <laughs> And that man will look you dead in the eye and go, I'm the greatest person. I'm the greatest football player to ever live. And sure, you can go, he's arrogant, but he's <laughs> proven but it. But if he is, he is. Now, yeah, if exactly. he's ranked last and he says, I'm better than everyone, and it's like, dude, you're a bench warmer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I don't get it. And I want to make sure for anybody watching this, I absolutely put myself in this category. Not that I rag on other people for their successes. I'm a complete opposite. But in terms of what I do in my life, I'm always downplaying stuff. And I know that it's bad. And I know that I've got to stop doing it because... Well, you it say doesn't... bald a-hole. You start off your, I'm like this down, right away you're set, you're but, doing exactly this. That's a little bit different. That's because when I started YouTube, everyone, was, that was the, always the insult that I got if I said something they didn't like, oh, what a bored. So I was like, well, I'm just going to reclaim this and call myself a bored. And then I had to stop saying because YouTube kept like, like I got punished. I got told off. I said too much in the opening of a video so i said i, I call it bald a-hole so you you are right though it, it did start from a from that kind of a thing and it has thankfully uh broadened into a stupid nickname for myself but you've hit the nail on the head if no one's ever watched my videos before and the first thing they hear is on oh, the board they probably think well what a miserable so and so <laughs> <laughs> yeah Oh dear, but yeah, I, I, like I always say, like we're always going to have these foibles. As long as you're aware of them, I think it helps massively because you can't be the perfect human being. But there is, there's too much. I keep saying the same thing, but it's true. There's too much just ragging on other people. We should be, we should be celebrating people's achievements and figuring out how to be inspired and how to, how to get there. I mean, it's literally the reason we're having this chat is because I watched your videos and thought, man, I want to start doing videos like that. And then, bada bing, bada boom, here we are. And to think confidence for me, confidence and knowing your self-worth is one of the best, I don't know, the most important qualities. If I looked at it for a partner in life, you know, yep. a girlfriend, whatever, if you're girlfriend, boyfriend, circle friend, whatever you're into, to me, confidence and knowing your self-worth is so important because people think, oh, that person, they look like, you know, they're 9.9 .9 in the Richter scale. They're just a drop dead gorgeous. Oftentimes those people have no confidence whatsoever. They're basing everything on how they look. If they don't have a six pack, it's like, oh, I don't look good anymore. They don't have confidence. I'd rather have that person that looks okay, average, below average, but is like, I look good. I'm proud of this. I'm going to do the best I can to be my best version, but not be like, I look horrible and I'm not going out. I don't dare go to the beach because I don't have my six pack today. And it's like, oh my goodness. Like that is just really discouraging. So, I mean, I hope people can be out there and watch this and be like, you just be courageous, have the courage to be yourself, have some confidence because that is a huge attractive quality in a person. Yeah, and, you know, don't let the bastards get you down. And I love that phrase. I heard that on a TV show once. Because they're only doing it to try and mask their own insecurities. That's the only reason anybody will ever hurl abuse at you, really. Unless you've done something that deserves abuse, of course. But outside of yeah. that, the only reason people will ever, again, try and knock you down is because they're like, well, that guy seems to be doing well. I'm not doing well. How can, you know, as aside from me making changes in my own life, how can I justify the fact that I can continue to live the way I am? Oh, well, I'll just come up with this idea that, you know, X, Y, and Z and this. And it does, it really affects people too. Like it really, really affects people. And mental health is so important. And that's something I talk a lot about on my channel as well, how the more we can talk about mental health, the more normal it will become. And then mental health won't hopefully be as bad because you won't be beating yourself up in your own head because you know that you can just talk about it, right? Like, and it's, it's, it's a real it's a real difficult situation especially you know tying it back into the fitness stuff because so many people think well i'll sort my mental health out when i get the six pack when i get the when i get the muscles and it helps of course it helps but it doesn't help 100 percent. and you know as soon as you've got it you will then be worrying about the same things that you were worrying about you know worrying about before which is why again you know, I, I scream this all the time the most important word in health and fitness is health screw the fitness part take that and throw it away <laughs> you know the whole point is you're trying to improve your overall health be that physical mental or you know just your overall overall well-being and 
I think most people kind of get it, but I also think most people can be knocked off really, really quickly depending on the day, as can I. Like, I always want to put myself in this conversation too. All it takes is that, you know, one bad one bad comment on an already difficult day. And it's just like, man, where's the pizza? <laughs> Let, let's get the pizza. <laughs> and obviously there's going to be a lot of bullies out there. They're going to just be out there yeah. to put you down often, just trying to do that to make themselves feel better. And I've often been called a bully because I... I call people out but i really don't see it as being a bully if somebody goes out and makes a video and deliberately lies to you or says something wrong like cryotherapy is going to burn 500 calories and here's my business that sells cryotherapy sessions for 500 dollars, whatever it is and i'm like look the science says it doesn't do that and you're ripping people off and it's not okay and then stop bullying this girl that's not fair you're ruining her business and i'm like so I suppose just let people deliberately lie to you on the internet on purpose, which is the same thing as saying 10 minutes of hit cardio burns a thousand calories. If I don't call that person out, what am I even? That's the whole point of my challenge, like was literally to call out the bullshit and speak the truth and tell you what I actually think. I'm not going to lie to people. So I personally don't see me as a bully. A lot of people do because I don't just stay in my lane and talk about myself. I talk about other people and I'm like, Hey, it's not like I'm I'm not out there just to shit on them. I'm I'm correcting information. That's the thing. I think you, you give you give an opinion, right? And people are allowed to accept that opinion, or people are allowed to not accept your the opinion. If all of a sudden, you know, with the cryo chamber person, you said, and also I think you're a son of a, <laughs> then it's like, well, wait, uh, you know, we've crossed the we've crossed the line then. But no, I think given everything that your channel has been, and I'm sure will continue to be. Yeah, if you see, you know, cryo chamber therapy saying it's going to burn 500 calories and you ignore it, you're almost doing a disservice to the community that you've built up. Because the whole point is you said you're going to go out there and you're going to find nonsense and you're going to call out nonsense for what it is. And if somebody disagrees with you and wants to try, you know, try the cryo chamber, they still can do that. And maybe it does work for them. And that's absolutely great. But it's not going to burn 500 calories. <laughs> I know that. And you know that. So, you know, I, I think that the term bully is kind of like the term clickbait. The term clickbait has become completely, you know, people forgot clickbait used to be, you know, you won't. You won't believe what this actress did and you'll click it and it went jennifer eniston went to the shops you're like what <laughs> that's, that's not a thing but now clickbait has become anything that just tries to lure you in a little bit well that's not clickbait that's just coming up with a, a headline that you'd put on a newspaper in order to get people to read it and i think it's the same with this like there is a very there is a, a very distinct line between i've seen this information and i want to talk about it because i truly don't believe it as opposed to i think you are a bad person and i'm gonna yell at you because you never need to do that right there never needs to be any kind of personal you said it earlier any need of personal insults but it, it goes back to this whole thing that sometimes if you make a video people will take it as 100 percent. that's it now we have to we have to put the whole thing to bed as opposed to using it as a debate but once again i cannot be a thousand calories 10 minute hit cardio give I've me done that videos I, I know i've seen them i'll do that <laughs> hit cardio actually you know what i probably wouldn't i hate hit cardio so much i much probably still do steady state <laughs> i'm like it's just easier yeah and so uh, before i go i wanted to you know to give you this opportunity just tell us like what is your channel all about is there anything that you're you're trying to do right now anything you're working on goals just give us a, a quick little description of what is your channel like and what are you doing? Yeah, so my so my main personal channel is Simon Miller and it's just a collection. I mean, fitness related, obviously, just putting out fitness tips, looking at what's going on in the fitness world, reacting to stuff. I do do a lot of gym fail reaction videos because I'm a nasty person deep down. And I, find, <laughs> I find people screwing up in the gym funny. I also find it funny when I screw up in the gym. This is all one big thing. Uh, but, you know, obviously, I, I, I try and get as much uh, content for my wrestling that, now that I'm especially I'm back so you can get my wrestling highlights there, too. So it's kind of I kind of see it as a fitness focused channel, but with a little bit of like vlog style personal information about me. And if you're more into sort of me just reviewing straight up wrestling shows, you know, you can find me on What Culture Wrestling as well. But otherwise, if you search for Simon Miller on YouTube or Simon Miller 316 on, or 316, whichever one, on any kind of social platform, you will find me. And I guess if I had to sum up in one word, I would like to think that I put some good, positive, healthy information out there. Um, I just, I think 
I, I just try to be as motivating as possible. I think that's always my thing. Like, I'm not going to pretend you that I'm going to wow you with science because there's, again, you said there's people doing it better out there. But I, I like to think that I'm quite good at motivating people. Fingers crossed. So that's what I try and that's what I try and throw out there. So so yeah, that's what it's all about. And it's going all right. It's going okay. So fingers crossed. And so anyone wondering, I personally watch Simon's channel. I highly Thanks, recommend man. you follow him. He has great information. He's motivating. He's a little bit more like a toned down version of me, I would say. <laughs> so if you want to listen to him, he's going to be a nicer guy. He can tell you some good motivational <laughs> tips. So please go watch his channel. Happy to have you. I guess the interview's over. You probably know what this is. We're going to say until next time, I am out and just we'll do that. So let's do it together. Uh, oh, buy these supplements and buy my cookbook. Subscribe to Simon. And until next time, we are out. <laughs>